Sarah, I'm keen to hear about how your um, this sort of money journey has played out over time. But it, how is your firstly, how has your attitude to money and approach to to money changed over the span of your your business and career? I think the biggest shift has been from treating monetary progress as my only marker of success in my life. Not mm. necessarily because I've always had a, I, I've, I would say objectively, I feel like I've always had a pretty good relationship with money. My parents have always been very open, at least in like we were brought up not to speak about it outside the family, religion, politics and yeah. money were the topics we didn't talk about, but they've always been very open about teaching us how to save, teaching us, you know, went not to deprive yourself of an opportunity to celebrate, but also to be sensible for, you know, mm. have a rainy day mm. fun. Like, I feel like we've always been, I've always feel like I've had a comfortable relationship with money, but I definitely in the earlier days of my career treated it as a metric that counted more than any other metric. Not that I wanted to have a particular amount of money because I needed to spend it or anything, but because it, to me, it indicated whether I was worthy or whether I was doing well enough compared to my peers, or if I didn't earn more this year than I did last year, then I haven't moved ahead, even if all the other areas of my life I've moved forward. Like it just became such a narrow focused way of measuring how well I was doing in my life. And I think it's important, of course, but it was to the to the exclusion of any other factors of fulfillment of am I learning? Am mm. I interested in what I'm doing? Am I going for a promotion because I want it or because I think it's the next step? You know, it became very a very limited way to see the world. What's changed is I've kind of broken free from it having so much control. It's almost the last thing I think about, which is also probably a little bit irresponsible, but like <laughs> it became something that it wasn't a decision maker. Like if I feel like as soon as I switched my purpose to focusing on the things that I'm best at and that also make me feel the best, because that's where I belong and because I'm better and I perform better when I'm doing that, the money the money kind of figures itself out anyway because I've become more mm -hmm. abundant and I've gone for more positions and I've gotten better and upskilled in a way that has allowed me to you know, increase what I charge and then to have businesses actually pay that. And <laughs> I feel like it. I have such a different relationship to what it represents in my life, to how much focus I pay to it. And mm. I think I'm a lot more liberated now than I was. I think that that's probably partly a function of, and and I don't know the, the ins and outs of, um, you know, all of the detail of your, your finances, but it sounds like from what you're saying that, you you put got the building blocks in place, and I think that's something that um, you need to do before you get to that point. Because I speak to some business owners, I don't think it's a function of how well your business is doing or how much money you necessarily have available, but um, ha having the good habits, being consistent with that, and then, like I say, having that foundation there so that you can then pursue the things, knowing that you're not going to end up in trouble and you are, but you are also, you're enjoying yourself, but you're not over enjoying yourself because that lifestyle creep um, is, is, a, yes. is a serious uh, problem that some people, if they don't under, that don't figure out how to, you know, spend less than they earn or how to find balance, then it, um, they suffer. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't matter whether you earn a hundred thousand dollars, $500,000 or a million dollars a year. I've seen people of all sorts that, that still can have, you know, not as much as they they want or should have to to show for it. So I think mm. pursuing your passion's mission critical, sure. And and I agree with you certainly in business that if you're learn a few things and got a business mind behind you, then um, that that provides um, like you get the fruits of the labor there. But you want to make sure that you've got that the fundamentals sorted first to give mm. you the springboard to do that in a way that's responsible and and is going to work towards those. Um, you know, the results that you want.